He's gone. He's like. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. I see. I just took a moment there. Good to see you. Different. They, uh, well, get the haircut every two months. Buzz, just to buzz pretty much everything off. And I'm trying to think, did you have a yes, key uh, last time? Okay. They have like a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like go past the stubble, you just kind of. Just do the best you can, huh? You just got to go with that. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay, how about you guys? Good. 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 Yeah. I, did, I did not expect to see this, that's for sure. Surprised. <laughs> yes. well, well, let me put some fears aside. Um, we're not here for what you might think we might be here for. Um, well, they, they didn't know what this, that's a computer room. I was like, I didn't know we had a computer room. <laughs> Without computers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So you remember, um, I talked to you, Tammy talked to you, Dave talked to you. We're all from Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you was a different situation, right? Um, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Um, nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. So we're not here to get more charges on you or get any statements from you that are going to jam you up anymore. Right? That's all done. So all of our cases are closed and the court case is closed. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that's going to get you in any type of more trouble at all. Um, and so that's I wanted to make sure you knew that that's not why we're here. Okay. okay. Um, but why we are here. So, um, so the three of us were from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick PD, different goals. And um, the things that happened with you kind of all brought us together. And as the months have passed on since everything happened, we just keep in touch with each other and we keep talking to each other. And we've all separately kind of said, um, did Chris seem unique to you? I mean, me and Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation, we can't quite put our finger on it, right? Um, we think that your life leading up to all of the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us. And for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey, Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying to you. Um, and that stuck with me for the last couple months. It's been ringing in my head, right? Um, I've never, ever worked a case like this where someone told me that, ever. Um, you know, and so as I walked away, I thought, Chris is different. Chris is a little bit unique in that regard. Um, so in talking with Tammy and talking with Dave, um, I said, you know, what did you feel like when it all went down? When we were there, when we were talking to you guys, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, Right. Um, so when we saw you last, we were talking and talking and talking, um, about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, for me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. Um, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. Um, and you understand why that happened and we understand why that happened, but it left us with a thousand questions that we didn't get to ask. Um, and then even more importantly, I think it probably left you with a thousand things that you didn't get to talk about with us. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but, um, and so 
that's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything, you know, um, I think there's a lot of things that you didn't get to talk about. Um, and so, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me I saw it coming. I knew Chris was like that. I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's, it's interesting to me, right? Not, not one. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about that. Some of the people that we work with, uh, your family, Shanann's family, um, have said, you know, if you get to talk to Chris, would you tell him some things for me? So we have that to talk about today, and it's good. I think you'll like it. I think it will give you some closure. Um, and so, really, that's why we're here. Um, are you available to talk to us? Um, definitely. Okay. All right. Um, so, off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. Okay. If there's something that... You don't want to talk about that's okay. Um, we might press you a little bit. Okay, we might say, "Well, do you mind if we just maybe then ask one question? Um, if something makes you uncomfortable, just tell us." Um, if we need to take any bathroom breaks, we can take bathroom breaks. Uh, you know, for anything like that, and we'll take bathroom breaks and water breaks ourselves too. Um, so then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this there was like a pass for this and the AM and the PM. Okay. It's, yeah, they reserved the room the whole day. Oh, okay. just in case. That's just what they do. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if that was like two separate things or something like yeah. that. I think you have to go back for lunch to get um, counted for or something. Oh. Uh, accounted for. Yeah, I think. 11.30. Lunch is, yeah, lunch is like 11, but they count for like 12.15. So. Okay. so, in general, how is it here? It's a lot different in Colorado. Is uh, it? It's better like, or bad? It's better, I think. Because, I mean, it's. Here, I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like, I was segregated, and it was like pounding on the walls all night, screaming, and just, you know, just mm -hmm. talking from me. other people? Oh, yeah. Really? I was just telling me, like, how I should kill myself, and like, what they're going to do to me, and just like, all that kind of stuff. So, oh, yeah. it was, today, this, this is a lot different, because, I mean, people here, they don't seem to, it's not like they don't care, but it's just kind of like, they... They don't take, they don't like judge you as soon as you walk in. Colorado was like, they they knew why I was there and they just, that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like, they just, if they had one second alone with me, it would have been good. They would, yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. Must be out then. I don't know, out of like, what kind of jail. I don't know how, what it was like in, you know, DOC there, but, you know, like, they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. Wow. And it will. Mm -hmm. So they had to make sure you were completely separated from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. Like I couldn't, I didn't see anybody else there. Like I was, I was next to somebody, but like I never saw them. You just hear them? <laughs> How did I know who you were? Um, I, I don't know. I just, um, they, they make phone calls in there too. Oh, okay. And they got the newspaper in there before I got in that, got in there. So, yeah. How was, uh. Have you been able to talk with family? Members? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, we get uh, from six p.m. to seven thirty. That's our, 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 our my unit's time out, so we get to use the phone at that point. Time. Really? Mm -hmm. And do they charge you for it? Or? Oh, it's just like uh, it's like secures. Or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you make money to pay for that? Um, they put uh, money on the phone. Oh. So if I call, like if I was like to dial somebody's number, they have to have like a phone account set up. Oh, oh I just that's restricted. And then so the who you call pays for it? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you able to talk like family members and parents and all yeah, that? Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay. Good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Good. Yeah, yeah they, they don't hear from me. They're like, oh, what's wrong? What's going oh, on? <laughs> good. Yeah. And how is it with them? And so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I didn't know if they were going to, what they were going to say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so, yeah, I really appreciated what they said. I don't know about you. I definitely, it was, uh, I didn't expect them to be there. I know they were there on the 6th, on the number 6th, but I didn't expect them to fly back. And oh. they wanted to fly back to that. So. Yeah. And then a lot of what your mom said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do too. Do you care if we start or do you, do you have any questions for us? Go ahead. We'll start. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is, um, and I, don't, I should, I won't make any assumptions today. So, are you aware that this was a national story? 
after after a little while, I was so I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado. Okay. Because I mean, my attorney team told me, all right, no phone calls, no letters, no, no nothing. Yeah. Okay. So like, I made I made one phone call when I was in the segregation area there, but my dad didn't thought it was like somebody like a news oh. somebody trying to call. Oh. So he didn't answer. Yeah. So he didn't answer. But other than that, okay. I didn't talk to anybody, but from what the some of the deputies are saying that you know, or my attorney team coming in and said, you know, this is like they've got people from Australia, England, and all kinds of people trying to figure out what's going on. So, did they send you any? Did they send you any of the letters, like fan mail or anything? Well, um, I got letters, but I couldn't keep them, like in with me. So, like I could read them like on my hour out, but it's like you know, I got a bunch of just letters that had no return address and oh. stuff that was just you know. Not, not very good letters. Yeah. So, okay. They came from a weird perspective, didn't they? From what we have heard. Definitely. There was, there was one person, I guess, from Broomfield that was, like, writing, like, four times a week trying to come visit me. And then there was just a lot of people, like, writing that was, like, leading through markers saying, you know, like, you're a monster or you know, all kinds of okay. stuff. All right. Well, I don't – we're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, um, what happened with your family. And so that's going to be hard to talk about. I appreciate anything you can tell me about it. Um, if you need to take time out, if you need to get a tissue, that's fine. Right? Um, I think it'll be very good for you. It'll be good for us. Um, and so one of the reasons I asked about that national attention is um, we were aware that you were getting a lot of letters, um, a lot of interest, and then us personally as law enforcement, we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 times out of 100, they were just crazy people, right? Um, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Um, had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, while well, she told me about uh, one, some dude from Wyoming, yeah. Trent? Uh, yeah, that guy. That, okay. that, that blew my mind. I was like, who the hell is this guy? And who told you about that? Uh, attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we talk, talk about him? Yes. <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> you had to? Yes. Wasted yeah. our lives. Yes. So, Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, um, met you online on a dating app, um, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you. Um, and, and let me be very clear. Not only are we not here to jam you up today, we're also not here to judge you. Um, and if there is anything like that, you can imagine we've heard way worse, way different, way, you know. So um, if it's true, I hope that you can just casually say, yeah, I mean, this happened. It wasn't as bad as he said, but maybe this happened. So his story was um, met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe with men. And so he said, he met a couple times, met his friends, went to an apartment, uh, had a couple of meetings in a parking lot, and then that was basically it. Does any of that sound familiar? Okay. No, I've never met the guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, he talked about being in a, your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards. So. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. I've never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven out there to see somebody. Yeah. Um, and so this is maybe a weird question for you. It, it, uh, do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Okay. Any interest? No. Okay. Never had a time, experimented, wondered? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, from what John told me, he just found me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. Never got me. He had my phone. So okay. You could probably, yeah, we know. You could probably saw what app I had. Okay. I've never even heard of the app, but okay. apparently like he told me like uh, I met him through like a rehab center or something. Is that what he said? No, that was another guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 It was, it was totally, I had no idea. So did you see a picture of him on the news or anything? Um, John showed me a picture of him. Okay. He was like, well, this guy, I'm like, he was, John was kind of, you know, making fun, like, you know, sure. I'm like, no. So you saw it and you were like, no way. Yeah, was Big like, lips. Did you see the mm -hmm. giant lips? Yeah, I was just like, I have no clue. What this guy is. And he's somewhat memorable. I mean, yeah. If you met him or talked to him or got to know him, you might remember um, he's, he's, he was kind of meek, yeah. but also a little bit, um, flamboyant. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he, he, 
did fake lip or not fake lips, but injections. Uh-huh. He was very into skincare and makeup. Um, and he mentioned that one of the times, just as a gift, you got him some skincare products. Mm-hmm. Does that, any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. You can imagine all the stuff we're dealing with. Okay, so that's one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trent Bowles. There was another gal that you were dealing with. Amanda McMahon. Have you ever heard that name? No. John showed me a picture of her. Okay. Oh, you did see a picture of her too? Yeah, yeah. He had like. That's the same. Yeah, no, does, that, does that look familiar? That's the same picture you showed me on the okay. MSL one I was looking at like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. He said it was like a Chick fil A parking lot rendezvous or something. Right. And that's just not true. That's what she's claiming. No. Okay. Um, I only went to one Chick fil A in Colorado. That was the one in Broomfield, mm-hmm. Highway 7. Okay. That was it. Okay. Um, do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just a cold. Okay. And that was it. Yeah, that was okay. it. Um, as these people have come out, for the most part, we've not given their stories much credit. They're just crazy people who want attention. Um, and so, but when that does happen, it does make us think, um, you know, there may have been others. And so Nicole was the only one. That was the only one. Was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done? No. Okay. All right. Um, do you mind if we talk a little bit more about Nicole? Okay. So walk me through it because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about. Right, um, we didn't we talk. Just kind of skipped on and you know, talked about where the girls were. But so, what happened there? So it was probably around probably June first or something. That's when I first met her, and um, it was just like a work conversation. That she messed with the gas meters that you know we were out in the field, and I was messing up. And then you know, I took a door like, "Hey, you know, how, what's going on with this? Like, how do I fix it?" And you know, after that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office and. I think it was probably the fourth time meeting. Um, she had asked me because, like, when I we were talking back and forth, I would say, uh, you know, like, we moved here from Colorado or from North Carolina and stuff like that. And then uh, she was like, "What's all this weed stuff?" Become like, oh, I took out my phone and showed her a picture. Like, uh, my girl's on the phone. It's like, oh, okay. She's like, so you know, like, yeah. Like, you know, I don't wear. I didn't wear a ring at work because like, I got off so I get refitted. Like, I lost all that weight. So, but um, you lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight. Yeah, it was literally like I was out in the snow one time. I went like that, and my ring went off on the rocks. So I was just like, I was panicking trying to find it. Like, can't wear this anymore. <laughs> but um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days, and she texted me outside in the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth, and it was just you know, just like you know, like she used to work in a little rig out in North Dakota, I think. And uh, we just kind of shredding the stories back and forth about what we did and everything, and then. One day I just kind of went to a different different level, and then I never thought I would ever go to that level. But she was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. After, uh, yeah, we were in San Diego from the 22nd to the 26th of June, and uh, we met up after after we got after we got back. And uh, how did you guys meet up? Uh, at a park in uh, Florida. We got to work somewhere. Um, and after that, we just kept seeing each other pretty much the whole month of July. So I'm asking this. Um, you tell me if I'm wrong. You strike me as somewhat of a shy person. So when you guys were meeting, did it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first? Okay. From both sides? Yeah. Okay. It was just kind of like feeling each other out. It's kind of yeah. like, I don't, I mean. Yeah. Um, and so, texts, any calls? More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's June that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just flirting. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Because um, the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I, no, I wish I was on the field more instead of the office. So was that long, but yeah. yeah. I can kind of see it in your eyes. That's uh, that's kind of where the path started, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I was like, because 
when I was a field, when I went from a, like a rover to a field coordinator, like I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we're going to go, and everything like that. You know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm-hmm. and instead of like coming to the office like for more than an hour. Right. And it gave me more time to run into her pretty much. Yeah. Okay. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married at first? She did once I showed her the pictures yeah. on my phone. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, the home screen picture. Mm-hmm. So, so was okay. your wife in that picture or was it just your girls? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the like the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married with my kids. Okay. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? What did you think about that? I figured it was like, you know, just trying to, same face, trying to, you know, I was just trying to, and some of my sister said it was like, uh, just trying to keep things together. Yeah. You know, just trying to, she, she, she phrased it a different way, but just kind of like, uh, just like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her, because I'm sure she got bombarded by all kinds of different sides from the media and everything, so... And Have you her, talked to her at all? No. no. I'm no. hoping she hasn't, like, you know, written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Um, right, and are you not allowed to talk to her? I, I would hope not. Okay. No one's told you that, though? No, I mean, I would I would expect, like, uh, I, I thought, like, in Colorado, it said, like, on a DOC list. Of, if you're on, a, like, a victim list, you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here, I'm not sure if that's the same. But I would just talk to my sister, my parents... Uh, some friends of my parents. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to just get some closure. Just to say, like, hey, you know, just once. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, hey, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry. I'm not sure, like, what happened, like, afterwards, like, what you went through. Like, if you had like counseling, if you're like, you know, different state, if you had to leave everything behind, I just want to let you know, like, I'm sorry, and that's something I just thought about like happening or happening to somebody else either. Would you be alright if we told her that? That's fine. Do you want us to? Do you want us not to? And if she would want to even talk to you guys, then I'm not sure if you can in contact with her. I'm sure she answered your phone call more than the attorney phone call that she didn't want to go answer. Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that, they figured out, I guess, where she lived. Yeah. They left a call, a uh, business card there. And she just, pretty much after, like, the fifth attempt, they said, she said, stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else, so. And hopefully it's calmed down since, but, but uh, I'm sure, like, I just hope she can, like, like, I'm not, there's like normalcy for her, not since she's on the outside, but I'm hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm sure like, that would have been hard if she did. Mm-hmm. I know that Narco was her dream job, so that's the one thing I always like asked my attorneys is like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Because that was one thing since she always told me that was her dream job. So, mm-hmm. oh really? Yeah. What does she mean? Oh, uh, like the get like like an old company in the dark. I was like, you know, I mean, unless you're working for like BP or like kind of Phillips or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. And the dark goes like, you know, looks like big leagues. Yeah. Can I ask kind of a tough <laughs> question? Um, did you love her? I felt like it was true. Yeah. I think so too. I think it was the same from her. Yeah. Okay. Um. Tell us about the time you spent with her. Well, I mean, it felt like it was, you know, I think, like when you said, like, more, I was more like a shy guy, it's kind of like, i never, like, been perceived by anybody before, it's kind of like I was the one, you know, trying to pursue, because, like, when me and Shanann met, it was like, you know, she was always, like, pushing me away, kind of like, you know. She was sick for a while, right? Oh, yeah, she had, yeah, she was, uh, she had just got diagnosed with lupus, and she was on, like, a bunch of different medications and stuff, and <laughs> Um, it was like I guess I was not her type. And you weren't her type. I, I wasn't her type because like she 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 told me like when I, when, I, when she first because we had met she told you that. Yeah. You're not yeah. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, it was like you know when we first met like it was at a movie theater 
my uh, cousin's ex-wife set us up. You were dressed like shit, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't. I, I think didn't, that's what you told me. Yeah, I didn't know, like, that. Play Fortnite games. So she was fancy well, was and he was in, like, ball. shorts and tennis shoes shirt. or something, right? <laughs> she was in, like, I should have known the doorman, you know, was in a suit. And I was just like, <laughs> this isn't good. I like, was it a theater? It was a fancy theater, right? It was Kinda? in Charlotte. It was called the Apple Center. And apparently, it, 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 they give you like champagne and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, the, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah, yeah. I think he theater. came. I think he came like he was going to a like I was, Cinemax, like, 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 uh, like, like I was going to a bond like bond AMC, like a play theater. <laughs> no, it was like like you like movie most watch the normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yeah. like have like you know a jack and coke inside the theater and just yeah. sit there and. Just, Whatever, but like, uh, yeah, so when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk to the bartender a little more. And like, no, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not here to me. But yeah, like, it was, I was like persistent trying to pursue something I, I liked her. And uh, even, even, like, even on the first day, like, I couldn't even eat anything, really. I was just like, you know, just so nervous. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, it was just, she was just like, you know, chowing down. And she was like, you eat like a bird. I'm like, oh, that's fine. And she talked to my parents, like, you know, months later, she was like, this guy just never ate. He's like, this guy eats like a trash disposal. Just trash disposal. I was like, no, not, with, not around me. I was like, well, I was nervous. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like shaking and everything. But, um, yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her. And then just like, um, finally, I just, I grew on to her. Like, you know, I would always like, like with her medications and stuff, I would always like, she had like eight bottles of medication. So I would always get like her day and nights and kind of like put them all in that little, you know, flip open the box, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I would always, you know, be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy. And she said after that, she knew that I was like a, kind of a keeper. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, like, who goes to a colonoscopy after three months with somebody? Right. It's but, a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> but she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you might go to the colonoscopy. And I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. Like, even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where she's in the bathroom that's all day. That's a good test. <laughs> <laughs> that, that clear stuff that's not really, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it felt like a great. It was a great relationship. Everything was. Everything was great. Now you're really? talking about with Kessinger. No, with uh, uh, Tom Ocean and, and um, like the first first year, you know, like yeah, you know, my parents never. I don't, I don't know. My mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I'm, I was. The, Baby, I guess I never, you know, but I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of like she never like really saw me. Like, oh, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I, when I turned eighteen, I graduated. I never moved back. Okay, that that, that old. So and my sister old? moved back and forth. <laughs> so how old were you when you met Shanann? I was twenty five. I was twenty ten. So okay. So no serious <laughs> girlfriends before that. No, nothing more than. Like six months or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was there was a, there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than like you know. I, the last girlfriend I had before Shanann, she was just actually got divorced, and I should, should never did that. But it was more of like a, I was kind of like helping her get through her divorce. It seemed like mm-hmm. she went off to somebody else. I'm like, oh, nice to know. You're the rebound guy. <laughs> the rebound guy, yeah. pretty much. But you know, that's how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women, um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracted to maybe a more dominant personality? It seemed like it because I'm more of the just reserved. I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah. But then, like, Stan usually made all the decisions, it seemed yeah. like. So I get that. I'm the same. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't think that's right with you, but. <laughs> so then, and I know it's hard to keep bouncing back and forth, but, um, and, and one of the reasons we're here is we just keep telling ourselves, Chris just does not fit the mold. Chris is not, no. like this, this, it just blows us away what happened, right? And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth, and that's really just to get to know you a little bit better, because we never really got that chance, did we? Um, we were talking about yeah, two months. Yeah, probably like three. Well, remember three or four times, probably. So then, with do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I, I would call her Nikki. Okay. Hello. 
There's so many Nikki's and Nicole's in this. Right. In this yeah, yeah, I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. Um, so then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, it seemed like. And that never happened. Like, she actually, like, asked me, like, like my opinion on a lot of things. And just, like, what I wanted to do. And just kind of, like, okay. That was new, wasn't it? Very new. Oh, that's fascinating to me. And so did it feel more like an equal partnership or it seemed like it yeah okay so then when it was date night would you guys talk about it would you ask to go somewhere would she say I want to go somewhere was it a two I you know the first time we went out it was to a movie over at the orchard about 144 over there and you know, I asked her like hey you want to go see this movie and like, she's like yeah I'm like okay cool and we just we got there it was sold out and you know normally probably just have you know just Wait two hours, like no, just go home. But not she just wanted to walk around, just talk. Like, okay, oh wow. So that was that was different, and you know, I think she wanted to go to the car museum, Shelby Museum, in Boulder. I never been there, and I was that's like, right up your alley. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was just like that was awesome, just to walk around cars for like an hour or so, and then you know, drag race in Andamir. Okay, not, I haven't been to a drag race since. 2008, and that was in Charlotte. Okay. We looked at a full lane drag strip over there. And it's like the NHRA, the top field, mm-hmm. fun car stuff like me and my dad used to grow up. Just yeah. Go there like all the time. And then, like, uh, went to camping in uh, Sand Dunes National Park. Mm-hmm. And I'd never, I'd, I'd never been camping. I always wanted to do it. I thought it was, she'd done it like countless times. Like, oh, really? So, okay. She's outdoorsy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she, she, I guess she, every time, like, she even needed to clear her head, she'd just go by herself, just go somewhere. Oh. Yeah. So she's a completely new type of uh, person and relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what were you thinking this whole time? Like, in the back I did, of your head? I, in the back of my head, I was just telling myself, what are you doing? Like, you know, every time, you know, I, I open up my phone, I can see pictures, of, like, of my wife and my kids, and I'm just like, what am I doing? And then, like, every time I was with her, it seemed like I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a, like a blinder that was in my face. Oh. And it was, like, every time I look back on it, like, you know, like, I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself, and, like, every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just, you know, talk to them, you know. Say so like, like I have like this book. Uh, I used to read for CC, and I, I remember that book. So I read that to to them like every night, and like there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them. So I just try to you know, just try to think back. Like I wish <laughs> this ever happened. And just like I wish that blinder wasn't on my head, right in my eyes. That would have seen what was going on. Like you know, I was having. Everybody says, oh, you're just out there having fun while your kids, you know, or kids and wife are on vacation. I'm just like, no, it wasn't like that, but it seemed like that's what it looked like when you're know, we going, you know, you're going to camping, going to dry race, going all the other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else. It's not your family. It just didn't seem right. Yeah. You know, all with her, it just didn't seem like I could even see that anymore. Yeah. And I was there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like I didn't have that time at home just to really think about mm. anything. Because literally, I didn't, like, I was only at home from, like, when I got home from work. I worked out, I ate dinner, and then I went nowhere else. Like, I was never, I never slept in my house in, like, the whole month of July. Now, talk me through that, though. When you said you went home and then you were at her house, was that while Chanel was gone? <laughs> oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house. No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It, it was insane. Quickly, like I didn't like. She even told me like she was never in, like a normal relationship. She would never have somebody over at her house like more than like a, once or twice a week. But she okay. felt like she wanted me over there. Yeah, she said she felt comfortable over there. Yeah. So it's just like that's what was different. Like she wanted me over there, but I, and I just wish that all that would just go away. I just wish I had almost like a. I know it's hard to, I know it's wrong to say, I wish I'd never met somebody, but I wish I'd, you know, maybe met her at work and then just kept it that way. I think if we had a time machine, 
Mm. I don't think this would happen again. Because sure. some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it would have been the next time. It just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Uh -huh. It happened so quickly that you tell me if I'm wrong. You're not the type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take control of the situation. It's just like the situation controlling me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that, man. I'm, I'm somewhat passive myself, and it's like, you know, there are situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? You know? Yeah, I don't know why. It was like, it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching the ticket on and just never get up. Yeah. Can we talk about the hardest subject? Um, so when we were talking, the last time we talked, um, the last thing we talked about was where the girls were, mm -hmm. but we never really got to talk about that night. So what happened? So nothing really happened that night. It was in the morning. Okay. It was, you know, me and Shannon, she got home like at two o'clock. And, uh, you know, I felt her getting in the bed. And I just felt like I didn't really, didn't, didn't feel like I just to make sure I looked at my phone at 2 o'clock and make sure she's okay, right, she's in there. And I could kind of feel her kind of stirring around a little bit. And, uh, she, I, I just had a feeling that she knew, like, what was going on. So, I mean, obviously, I didn't use, like, a, like an anarcho gift card, you know, that I'd gotten. I'd use my actual credit card. And, I, I kind of just felt like something. She knew what was going on, and she uh, she started rubbing her hand on me, and we ended up having sex. But uh, uh, I guess that was more like a test. Oh, I, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. That makes yeah, because when we talked, uh, when I woke up next, or later on in the morning, like you know, I I pretty much you know told her like you know I didn't think it was gonna work anymore. And she was like, what happened? What was last night? You know, mm -hmm. so I figured that that's what the test after I've gone through everything in my head. That makes sense. And she just told me, you know, like to get off of her. And she's like, I knew some, I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. I couldn't bring it up. I couldn't just say, yes, there is somebody else. But then never going to see the kid again, never going to see them again, get off me, don't hurt me, and then, is that what you said? So I was, because like when I climbed in bed, I was pretty much like on top, pretty much like straddling her, I do, and she thought I was going to like, you know, hurt her or hurt baby or something, so, because she, she knew that like, you know, I, something had happened. She thought I was just trying to, you know, just check out or something. So yeah. the next one that happened. I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk just a tiny bit deeper about that? So she comes home, uh, you know, she touches him, you guys have sex, it seems like she's doing her test, which I understand. Uh, it sounds like you do too. I'm sure like, you know, Nikki or or something you have to Cole Atkinson or Cassie probably told her, you know, that's what I was thinking, right? They talked about it during that whole weekend. More than like that, that's my parents told me there was like a uh, going through like text messages. It's like all like pretty much they all kind of just told her it's with somebody else type of deal. Yeah, and she spent a lot of time with the gals. That's what they did probably all weekend is talk about it, give her advice. I think that's mm -hmm. what we found, mm -hmm. with, right? Yeah. Okay. So she comes home. Uh, you guys have sex, and then did you fall asleep between then and going to work? Yes. Okay. So then at some point, does she wake you up, or does you wake up for work? Not a lot of work. No. Oh, okay. And you're going to work out. Mm -hmm. But then that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. She was pretty mad. Okay. Yeah, she, I mean, it was, I, I had already kind of knew that. I, using that credit card, it was kind of, it was. Was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh, I like you know I, had, I used like because I got these anarcho gift cards from like you know, you know doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that. And I had to use them all. Oh, was was part of you just like I ah, screw it, whatever I don't care. I'm using this card. 
I, 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 part of me just wants to say, Nikki, can you pay for this? But right. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Even, I think, um, from what my attorney said, she even noticed I used a different card, like a blue card. Um, maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough just using a mobile bank account or something. But, you know, you know, I told her I was going to Iraq, and I told you, I told you I was going to Iraq. Yeah. So it was just like, you know, it, even, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like, just like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like, you know, God told, like, gave me opportunities to get out. Like even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me because like, it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game. You want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? Like, in my mind, it was like, you know, go. Just, uh, just yeah, just, just say, hey, I, I, can't, I can't find a babysitter. Bye. <laughs> Nikki. Yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch in my head goes off, light switch in her head goes mm-hmm. off, maybe it just like goes different directions. Mm-hmm. That was kind of like my last like opportunity to kind of get out, it seems like. Cause I, I wish I would have said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann. Did she actually say you're never going to see the kids again? She said it to me before. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of hard to hear. Yeah, because she said to me before she went to Arizona. Because, like, I wasn't really sleeping in the bedroom. I was sleeping on the couch or in the basement bed or something. And, like, she had slammed the door. You're never going to see the kids again. So, yeah. Did she get fiery like that? Only once in our entire relationship I've ever seen her that, that way. Yeah. And that was... The, a time before, or was that on the night that it happened? No, it was uh, right back in North Carolina. Oh. It was one, it was just like one of those, it was, it was just a fiery argument that yeah. I never, like, I never raised my voice to her or anything. And, like, you know, I, like, I just got mad and I slammed the door, and she was like, God. I'm like, should have slammed the door. Is that when you were in North Carolina that mm-hmm. last week? No, it was like, like previous to that. This is like 2010, 2011. Oh, okay. It was like early, early, early. Okay. And her old house. Before kids? Yes. Were you dating or were you married at that point? Dating. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, I, I, I don't remember what it was about. I think some I think some girl maybe texted me like from my past or something. And like, I was just like, this. And you know, she was like, you know, don't have that happen again. And I'm just like. I have friends, right? They're females. Like right. I don't even talk to this woman anymore, right? It was just like, yeah. no. Was she fiery? Did she have that Italian blood that her mom has? Good Lord, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was she always like that, or, or was she? Uh, did she snap at things? Uh, it's, she would snap at me, but you could tell, like you know, something, something really irked her a little bit. Yeah, it, was, it would come out zero to a hundred type thing, or what? I've. Yeah, uh, zero to like, yeah, 200. Oh, interesting. <laughs> she's, like, she's, she gets activated about something. She's like, all right, it's going to happen. <laughs> well, that's why she was probably so successful at Thrive, right? Oh, yeah, like she had done yeah. a couple other like direct sales business, but this one was just like, it was different. Why? This one, like, um, I think she had done like uh, Origami Owl and like something called like uh, It Works and then like... Uh, other, 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 couple of other things like uh, some bags and stuff like stuff like that with the supplement stuff. But just because it worked with her, mm-hmm. it worked with me. She's like, okay, I can kind of like use this as like, all right, this is what's doing for us. Yeah. And then like after a little while, like she could see how like people are above her, how it was helping them, and then it was just like trickle down effect. Mm-hmm. And it was like a good system about like you know commission wise and everything, and everything was just she could use. All the business IQ she has from running those cell phone shops and from the dirty soft custom shops, all that. I mean, she she business minded. Yeah, she knows how to do a county book like yeah. in the back of her hand. So, so it all just like fell into place with all that. So then on that night, was it just a new type of fight? It was, it was never it was, had or what? What happened? Yeah, it was, Totally different type of flight. It was, you know, it was just felt like I don't know. It was more anger than than anything else. Like there was emotion to it at first, and then it just felt like it was just anger. It was just like you no, know, like like there was no love there. It was kind of like 
what we were saying and what she was saying, it was just like, it's almost like we knew like something was combating at, it, at, it, at each other. And we didn't know, like, it, was, it wasn't ourselves. Really? Anger from you or anger from her? I think it was more anger from me and more like desperation from her to, because she wanted to fix it. Yeah. She knew. She knew if something was right. Like, you know, like when the whole thing with my parents happened with the, somebody, my parents called it Nutgate. What happened? Nutgate. What's that? Oh, with the yeah. peanut. The peanut. Oh, oh yeah. Or what oh, that. Like, oh, with the, her family? Yeah. Uh, yeah pistachio yeah, yeah. ice cream or whatever. Yeah, yeah they. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that either. Yeah. I guess those people are calling it. So. Yeah. But uh, that was like another out. Like, you know, maybe I could have just like stopped everything with Vicky and just kind of concentrated on helping like whatever happened there. Because yeah. like, Shan had a story, my mom had a story. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Whatever happened, I probably asked my 10 year old nephew, probably can tell me what actually happened. Well, and they both have their feelings for good reasons, and they both didn't see it the other person's way. And Yeah. And like, maybe I. I, could, I didn't talk to my parents from then on until like August 6th. And like, you know, my dad took that whole week off. Wow. You didn't talk to your parents from then on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because like, my Janelle was like, do not talk to them, do not call them, do not do anything. Is that what she said? Yeah. And uh, the uh, Cece's birthday was 17th, but I think the actual birthday party was like a couple days after. In August? July. In July? Yeah. And, uh, like, my, my mom or my dad was going to go, but then there was, like, a post on Facebook about, you know, allergies and stuff like that. She had it made, and my dad was like, no, I just can't can't do it anymore. Just, like, because... He, he perceived that as her taking a shot type thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like she always says she never, you know, put those posts uh, directed at anybody, but I, like, she, she had a method. If you read them, you know who the yeah. was talking about. She had a method to the back, <clears throat> and you can see it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's... I wish I could have just took more time just to fix that. Yeah. Cause like I was like, I wanted my parents to be involved. Like since, you know, like the whole wedding thing. And then up to that, it was like, you know, my mom, my sister were always like, you know, combating with Shan, Shan combating with them. Mm-hmm. My dad was always cool. Like he's just like me. He's just like, you know, go with the flow. Like I just want everybody to do a long time deal. Chicks, man. I loved your dad. Oh, he's the best. Mm-hmm. Isn't he? I so, loved your dad. I'm sorry. Keep going. That's cool. Um, I just wish I could have, like, just when we were in, uh, we were at the beach in August, like, my dad was supposed to, supposed to take two the whole week off just so we could see the kids and, like, uh, see me and, like, we have a cookout at my sister's house or something. And then, but we just pretty much spent five days at the beach and Shenanda, like, booked us to, like, you know, I mean, it's, I don't want to say, like, punishment for them not to see the kids, but, like, I wanted them to see it, mm-hmm. to see them, you know, just, I wish I could have fixed it all, fixed all that. And I, I even, like, when I was at the beach, I told Shadan that it was more like, like what was going on was more like, I feel like, you know, because my dad's my hero, I feel like I've lost, like, something in my life. I haven't been talked to for three weeks. Mm-hmm. I haven't been seeing see the kids for three weeks, you know, on FaceTime or anything. Mm-hmm. And I wanted them to be able to have that relationship. And, and they, she was pretty much gone ho like, she tried to, Killed my daughter by giving her pink. I was like, That's I don't think she gave it to her. <laughs> I know. Was that her stance? Is that your mom put that put something in front of Cece? Like to kill her or no? Just just, just, just like, like didn't care. Like like didn't pay attention. She she thinks that allergies and like this state of age is like people think oh you're like fine. it's made up. Like he'll yeah, be fine. He'll just have a rash. He'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I've seen Cece. You know, like the first time we'll. I seen a picture of when he had a cashew the first time. It wasn't good. And then she had kiwi the second time, and then the same thing happened. And um, I know it's real. Do you know it's serious? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it wasn't like her throat like closed up, but she broke out in this full body rash. It looked really mm. crazy looking, and luckily, like you know, nothing, nothing with her throat like happened. But um, so did that make you angry to at your mom for doing that? Yeah, I mean, I was just like, mom, you just gotta. I told her you need to think. You need to like, you know pay attention just because another kid can have something doesn't mean another kid can have something because like we were at that birthday party at Jeremy's that Sunday you know and they had this cake there like Bella, Bella wanted it so bad I'm like can't get that to you because Cece can't have it she was like you know okay and all the other kids were like they can't have the cake you know like I just kind of took them off and gave them some like uh, like a 
the strokes and pops or something. But, you know, it's just like she had to learn that just because one kid can have something and there's another kid that can't have it for a legitimate reason, like, you know, she couldn't have done it. But, you know, that's the kind of talk I had with her. And she didn't call me. I think it was maybe like middle of July or something when she told me all this had happened. Mm-hmm. That's when I called my mom and talked to them for a while. And then they were just like, you know, they just couldn't deal with her anymore. Man, I'm just kind of like, you know, they like flipped out. And my nephew told Bella to go hide behind the curtain because I don't think your mom was going to let you come over here again or something like that. Aww. So it got heated. Oh, they were, it was bad. Really? Yeah, they, it, was, it was like a last straw between them, I think. Like in the same room or over the phone? No, they were at, at, the, at they the were, And so they were my, really at my mom's house. Yeah. Because CC and Bella and my niece and nephew were there. Okay. How did so, Shanann find out about the ice cream thing? Because uh, Chanel was there, and uh, I guess they were all sitting uh, on one, one this couch. It was kind of like a U. And my niece went into the kitchen, and she knew where the ice cream was. She'd, um, been, there. She'd been there. So it's not like your mom gave it to her? Like she got oh, no, her own no, she, ice cream? Yeah, she went in the freezer, got it, went out, and sat beside CC and started eating. So, but, like, it's just a matter of, like, CC could go, like, right. Right, like that. Now, I, don't, I don't know what would happen if she just got it on her hand. Right. But, like, I know on, like, the prick test, you know, mm-hmm. on, the, on the back, it's like a well. So, so would they stay in there at your parents' house during that time? Cause yeah, it was, um, so they would go from my, uh, from Sandy and Frank's house yeah. for, like, a few days or five days and then go to my mom and dad's house yeah. for a couple of days. Okay. Uh, back and forth. Okay. So it happened during that time mm-hmm. when you were there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so... There were so many things that happened, weren't there? They just were little tiny ingredients to this yeah, recipe. Yeah, nothing like it's nuts, Chris. I mean, it's just so many things just didn't go your way. Everything was like a, like somebody was stirring a pot, and it was just yeah, it's exactly what it was like. So then, I know I keep bringing it up. Can you walk me through the, just the last few minutes before Shenanda? It was pretty much just. Like, I had gotten dressed for work, and then, like, we started talking. Did she come to you? No, I was, I was just right there in bed. Oh, just, okay. Yeah, so I was just, like, I got my blue shirt on, my jeans and everything. You ready to go? I was ready to go. And was she asleep, or did, did you have to wake her up to finish your conversation? Or? I would wake her up, because, like, she, she, she got on, like, 2 o'clock, so she was she pretty much out of it. But I never knew, like, if like if her plane got delayed. Someone, someone always told me, like, she just, like, sat around with Nicole who just like talked for a while and came home or something. I'm not sure if that yeah, was it was, was delay. Yeah. But um yeah, when she came home and everything, but yeah, like I I, I woke her up to talk to her. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is that because it was just eating at your brain? Yeah, like I, I knew like, you know, something like that something was still right with me. So I know like she knew. I I just I just knew she knew. I just felt like maybe like Maybe the kids weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh, interesting. Now, um, I don't mean to offend, but I have to ask, is that really the truth? Okay. I really felt like they were they weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh. And like so, she would take them somewhere? No, I just, I, just, I just felt like either maybe I wouldn't go home, maybe they weren't going to be there, or I wouldn't be allowed in type thing. I think I saw some text messages where Shania talked about... Um, that she would take the kids to another state or something because she couldn't wouldn't be able to afford to live in Colorado or something. Did she say that kind of stuff to you, or yeah. what did she say about that? She said she couldn't afford to live in Colorado by, on her own, and that uh, I told her like, well, you know, drive. I mean, she pretty much makes the same amount I do. Yeah. But uh, as she said, she wouldn't she wouldn't want to try just because you know Colorado just, just the price of living there was a lot higher than North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And just so, just so I'm clear, you thought maybe she was she. In your mind, you thought maybe she would take the kids somewhere else or, like, lock you out of the house or... Or just, like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make a scene, like, you know, trying to, like, pound on the door, trying to get in or anything like that. But, mm-hmm. like, I just felt like, you know, that that was what I did on Sunday. You know, it was kind of like, or Saturday night was kind of like the last draw. Kind of like going out with somebody and using uh, an actual bank account card and just, like, not trying to hide it at all. So walk me through it, though, because she comes home... She touches you, you guys have sex, you fall asleep, then you wake up for work, all natural, all, you know, a normal day's work type thing. Yeah. 
What was it that made you think, I just can't do this anymore, I have to talk to her? I just, I, it was eating away at me. Like, I yeah. knew, like, something. I knew everything that I did. Like, I know, like, when I was with Nikki, it was, you know, different. Like, I wasn't even, like, in the realm of I'm a dad, I'm a husband type thing. Oh. And then, like, like I, like I was saying, when I'm never at home, like, sleeping in my own bed, like, I have no, like, concept of that anymore. Interesting. It so in your kind of, mind and heart, you can move, move on. Like, it was, it just, it kind of felt like if I wasn't at home, like, I didn't think about it, almost, because, like, I, if I wasn't sleeping on my own, but, like, I think there was one, at one point, like, Nikki had gone to the mountains with her friends for, like, a few days, like, into June, first part of July, and then, like, you know, that part, you know, obviously, obviously I was at home, but, like, from that whole month of July on, it was, like, I was never at home. Like, I never had all those reminders around me. I never had, you know, like, every time my wife would call me, I would be at Nikki's house. Oh. While she was in North Carolina? Yeah. Okay. And I would, like, you know, walk outside and talk to her, like, when I was next to the car or something like that. But uh-huh. I would never be at home looking, like, have all these pictures around me, just being in the same bed, you know, seeing my kids' beds, seeing everything that, right. you know, that we go for the last six years. And so, did you just want to once and for all get it out in the open? I just, I just wanted to just tell her how I was feeling at that point in time. Like, I didn't feel like me and her were compatible anymore. Yeah. I honestly didn't feel like that because what was going on with Nikki, it, just, it was new. It was new. Right. Absolutely. Anything that's new always feels better than the old. Yes. Yeah. You were you probably bitten anything. by the love bug. Yeah. It's how a lot of therapists talk about it. Yeah. It was just like... I never felt that. I mean, even like with new relationships in the past, like it always feels different, like you know, the first couple of weeks, and then you know. But it just with someone Nikki felt different. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like you said, like you know, I was more in control, and like it was more of like maybe more of me coming out. Because mm-hmm. Nan always said, like it always seemed I was more myself around other people, like you know, her cousin Cody, like you know, like. She, uh, Cody lived or came up and visited us for a little bit while we were in Colorado for a little while. And Cody always talked about, he like called, Chris is so funny. Chris is like, Shannon would always just like, why are you him like that with me? I'm just like, you know, maybe I always felt nervous about you. There's only so much oxygen in the room, right? I say I this to some people with dominant personalities, mm-hmm. you know? I just always felt nervous. I always felt like I was, you know, I never could actually just, you know, Myself, right. Nikki, I was myself like all the time. It was just different. Well, and it seems as though, and again, it's hard to talk about it. You tell me if I'm wrong, but it also seems, uh, is it accurate to say that sexually you were able to say, Nikki, this is what I would like, this is what I'm into, or blah blah blah, and maybe not what you No, Nikki just wanted, I mean, she wanted what she wanted, she wanted to do it pretty much all the time. I was like, okay, that's mm-hmm. fine with me. Okay. You know, with Shannon, it was just like, I'm like, hey, <laughs> sometimes it happens, sometimes it didn't. But it, that wasn't that wasn't the case as far as that way. It wasn't just like sex or whatnot. But okay. it was mainly I was just one myself. I could like just not think about what I was going to say or plan what I was going to say or not, you know, you know, say something stupid or something. <laughs> but, right, a little bit of freedom. Yeah. Can I ask you something about that morning that you had sex with Shanann? Did you feel at all like maybe you were kind of cheating on Nikki by doing that? I felt strange. I felt like, you know, the first time I was with Nikki, I felt weird. First time. like, sure. And then the last time I was with Shannon, I felt totally strange. I was like, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I had become. I, didn't, I felt like I'd become people I see on TV. And that did not feel right with me. Like, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what had happened to me. Mm-hmm. So Nikki even asked me, like, are you, have you done this before? Have you gone straight away? I'm like, I've never even thought about it. It's like, what's, what's different? It's like, I guess it's just you that's different because I've just never actually, like, like, I've seen girls smile at me before, never done anything about it with her. It was just like, it's like she had a leash on me and she tugged me away. And as soon as she walked, I'm like, what the heck, what's going on? So. Well, and Tammy brings up a very good point. I wonder if, that last time with Shanann having sex, 
had a somewhat of a role in you thinking, I got to I gotta do something, I got to say something, we got to have a talk, something's got to change. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, just, I felt like it was like maybe like a trigger point or something like, it's like you hit the push button on the, on the bomb, it just blows up. Right. There's something in my head was just like, some, just like, something was hurting. Just like I had to say something. Okay. So then exactly what did you say and what happened? So when I woke her up, I was just like, hey, we just got to, just got to talk. Okay. And I just like, I told her, I don't feel compatible. I don't feel like this is going to work. I just, you know, I don't want to, like, can we cancel a trip to Aspen? Just here, booked a trip that week oh. to go to some, like, mystery four-star luxury hotel or something. Mm-hmm. Just the two of you or the whole family? Just me and her. Okay. And she had a man to fair because I watched the kids that week, that weekend or something. Okay. And um, I was just like, can we cancel that? Can we, like, do something? Like, the, from what I remember, I even said, can we move to Brighton? <laughs> just to get away from, like, this house. Oh, but like I'm not sure if that was like like in the beginning or the end of part of the conversation or whatnot. That conversation was so many different ways. Like they had gone from like staying together to not staying together to just like all of the above. Okay, so this is half an hour, an hour or what? No, I definitely not more than half an hour. I don't think. Okay, I don't think. Are you crying? Is she crying? Yeah, it's, it's back and forth. It's like, you know, she's, she's got, you know, mascara. She, she didn't wash her face when she got home. So she had makeup on still, so her mascara was running all over her and stuff like that. And yeah, it was and nothing nothing about that conversation. I just wish I could take all of it back. Just be, just the, the whole Nikki thing back, everything. But so then when did it turn? As far as that conversation? Mm-hmm. Just at the end when I was telling her, like, I, Told her I didn't love her anymore. That's what happened. What happened? She told me to get off her, and then I put my hand on her. Okay. Did you say she said something like that you were hurting the baby or something? So that was before that, because like when I was straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. Why did you get on her like that? I just when we got when we got on the bed. I just, that's just what I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like I mean, she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm-hmm. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? I don't know. Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you did. It's like the whole, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know. Like, I, I try to go back in my head. I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. And just everything just kind of like felt like you had to. It just felt like it was. I don't even want to say it, it felt like I had to. It just felt like there was already something in my mind that I was implanted that I was going to do it, and I woke up that morning and it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. You never thought about it before. It was just like I don't want like when like like you said, like in the sentencing hearing that the prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes for something like that to happen. Like, why, why can't I just let go? I didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I just let was go. it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like, I don't even want to know what, what she saw when she looked back at me. Honestly. Did you look at her? What was she doing? She was fighting. Why do you think she wasn't fighting? I don't know. It's, uh, maybe she was praying. Maybe she was just. Now I read, read the Bible that said, you know, like you know, uh, the scripture says, "Don't uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not know what they do." Mm-hmm. Um, maybe she was saying that. I don't know what she was saying in her head, but she, you know, like like when you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and start check for defensive wounds, and like, you know, there wasn't going to be any. She didn't fight. I don't know. Why? If she didn't grab, could she grab your arms I, or were her arms pinned down? Or? I don't, not that I remember. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think like I moved to where my knees were around her arms or anything. But it was just kind of like when I got on top of her, we, we started talking. It was, that was it. <laughs> it's kind of like in my head or like in the back of my head, that was going to happen. And just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could have let go. 
Did it seem like it was that long due to four minutes? How long did it seem for you? Almost kind of felt like it was felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still. It's kind of like I just saw my life just disappearing before my eyes, but I just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like like if you picture somebody else around you holding your hands, holding you, keep you from not not letting go. At some point there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, uh, how that's do you the only know? way I can describe it, honestly. Okay. Like a snap or something. I know. I know. I guess my attorney had said like some, you know, you know, strangulation is more of like a, I don't know, passionate type thing. I'm just like, I don't know how that can be passionate. Mm-hmm. It's just intimate because you're right in there, yeah. using your own hands. It's a lot different than someone standing across the room and you shooting them or something like that. So, I just, I just felt like somebody was like behind me, just like just, I just couldn't let go. It's interesting to me because there was a lot of things in your life that were like that, right? Where you're just like maybe felt out of control, or maybe felt like I don't know why I couldn't stay, take a step back, or you know. Like even when you said when your buddy was like, "Let's go to the football game," you wanted to say yes, you could. Yeah, I wanted to. Like I, I never been I been to a football game since North Carolina, so I was just like, "Yeah, sure." Like, I wanted to say that. Yeah. I wanted to just, just text him, "Yeah, you know, there's your fell through, can go." So, then what? After you know, Shanann was I guess once I was when she was gone, I was just like I, I didn't know what what was going on. It's like it was like a traumatic I don't know what you call it, a traumatic event type and everything and like. I was shaking. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind. I don't think like like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. Like most people say, like, "Why well, I just called nine one one?" When I was like, "I you're in that situation," you know. You don't know. We don't know what he would have done. Mm-hmm. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Like, like I said, if somebody shoots somebody, you don't know what they're going through their mind at that point in time. Mm-hmm. You don't know what he would have done. So what happened next? Bella came in. Is that what happened? Bella came in. What she said? Oh, wrong. Did she hear something? Is that what she Obviously, I think. Okay. What you tell me? Somebody else feel good. And then, did that happen with Bella right in that room? Not in front of her. Okay. What happened? She just she walked in as you know she talking up. She was she was sleeping. Mm-hmm. Did you take her back to her room? I put Shannon in that sheet and found it's like Okay. Then what? So I carried her downstairs. Back my truck up. At that point were the girls still there? Okay. So then Shannon's in the truck. And then went to Back to the house. Got okay, everybody back in the truck. Was Bella first or was Cece first? In the truck. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So she was first. And then Bella was next. Was Bella alive when you put it, when you guys got in the truck? Oh, okay. What happened? I go back up. Okay. 
<laughs> I don't really want to talk this about this part, honestly. Okay. Those are my kids. This is my baby. I have to talk to them every night. I don't know how to see this. Okay. Every time I see pictures, I don't know how this could happen. And being a dad was the best part of my life. I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos. We see that love that you had for your girls. Like, it's obvious to us. And even to us, we it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's giving piggyback rides and, you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things, um, how you get to that point, you know? I don't know. Just, like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was, like, to fight back. Yeah. Like when that prosecutor said it fell a bitter tongue, like, repeatedly, I just, I just wanted to just bang my head up against the wall. So you put Shinyan in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats? Or or I guess they didn't probably have car no, seats had, in your no, truck, did no, they? No, they were sitting in the back, with the, like in the, that bench. And so Shinyan was back there, too? She was on right? the floor. What did they say about Shinyan being on the floor? Mommy, okay? What did you tell them? She'll be fine. Did you have your their stuff with them, like their toys and their blankets and stuff? They had they had some they had something with them that they carried. One of them, I think, had, I think CC and Bella had like a blanket or something with them, mm -hmm. like a pink, a pink blanket. Or... What about the dog? I think one of them had a dog, right? That talked or dog. Yeah, they had, yeah, one of them had like a little barking dog. Was that with you too? Do you know? I think it was. Try to, try to, it's hard to remember. Like, yeah. if they had, like, a big blanket, small blanket. So, I think I saw um, on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans was, for when you put that in there? I don't know what was going through my head. I feel like I maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time if I was doing all this, honestly. Yeah. You should think about that. What would you think about that? I felt like I deserved to live after what had happened. Was there any thought to um, the whole family going away that day, to include you? After everything that happened, that was a definite thought. Yeah. See, it's interesting to me. Um, we had all kind of wondered if there was a point when you were all together, and if you were all going to pass together. That, to me, makes sense. Because that's, even though it sounds crazy, um, that's what a family man does, right? Family man doesn't do what he did. No, I know. I guess what I mean is... Um, it seems like you guys were going to be together forever in that way. Is that maybe what's going through your head? I, honestly, I just felt like I didn't, I didn't deserve to live. Yeah. And it was like whatever judgment I was going to come upon myself, you know, was, I just didn't deserve to be on this earth anymore. Mm -hmm. What happened? So what made you not do that, do you think? I don't know if it was just more of like a... Because with the, with the site, maybe it was just more of like, I would have hurt more people than just me and everybody else. Like, I know there's other people out there. Not like at the site, but other people, like maybe out in the area, like... I didn't want something like on the site to catch fire and blow up. And then other people around would get hurt and the same. 
So you were thinking initially about starting a fire out there or an explosion or something or just, no, not, not for, not for that. Just like maybe I could just take care of myself and not have been good. Gasoline, that's the only thing you do. I mean, I don't have like, I don't have a gun. I don't have anything like that. It's not like you just commit suicide that way. But so just like, to blow yourself up? I mean, it was just, I wasn't thinking. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. I, it was, I mean, I don't have, I don't have weapons. I don't, I think, I've never hunted before in my life. I don't know what, I mean, nothing was right that morning. Yeah. yeah. I remember you kept telling me that. You kept saying, I didn't know what I was doing, Tammy. I didn't know. Like, yeah, when you asked me about the sheet, like, what were you doing? Like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I think you were just like in automatic mode or it seemed like. So did you st drive straight out there? So what were you thinking on the way out there? I was kind of like what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, you know, nervous, shaking, not knowing like, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. Like I know like my life has completely changed. I don't know like what's happening. Like. Honestly, like I try to picture that that whole ride, like it's like forty five minutes to an hour ride out there, and it's just like, couldn't I have like saved my girl's life? Couldn't I have done something? Why did I do? I don't know. All right. Like this is my flesh and blood. This is like what I wanted all my life was to be a dad, just to have you know kids and they love me, they you know all that, and it just nothing nothing made sense. All right. Like the oil tank, nothing made sense. I'm just like what the doing. Mm -hmm. So what happened when you got out there? I took Shanann out just to a place off to the site. Mm -hmm. and then what were the girls doing when you were doing that? Just sent them back to the truck. And then what happened after that? CCU was first. She did have a blanket. She had a blue blanket. A Yankee blanket. So was she alive when she went into the oil tank? No? I put the blanket over her head. And that's how she passed. Couldn't breathe. No. I put the blanket over her head. I didn't want to. No. I strangled her right there in the back seat. Okay. What was Bella doing? She's in my desire. Did she understand that she know what was going on? She didn't say anything. And then the same for Bella. Just without the blanket. With the blanket. Oh, okay. I didn't look. It's like every time I Close my eyes, I started to hear her say, Daddy, no, and that was it. That's what Bella said. I hear that every day. You really? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, it doesn't take anything back to that day. I know. Is it possible that in your mind you didn't want them to suffer throughout their life? Was this like a mercy thing? I mean, you can say that like after the fact, but it was just like, I don't. You didn't feel like that during I, that? I just didn't. I felt like it was just like an anger with Shanann, with everything that I was just taking it out on everybody that was in front of me that morning. Yeah. Kids growing up with growing up without their parents, they I mean depending on what grandparents or whatever they whoever they grew up with seemed to be fine, but it was just like it was an anchor thing, it was just like 
And what were you so angry at Shanann about? Like if you could pinpoint it. Nothing that nothing that makes anybody to want to do this. I mean, you could be angry at your spouse like your whole life, but you should never have done anything like this. You should never let it get to that point. But I let it get to a point where I never, I mean, I've never been angry before. Like, this was like the epitome of being angry. Yeah. The epitome of like showing a rage, the epitome of like losing, losing your mind. I mean, even like some people in here said, dude, like, the heck happened? You must have freaking snapped. And, like, I just walk away. I'm just like, you know, it's, it's, I don't see it in my mind how it could have, like, you know, I look outside every day, I'm like, what could we be doing right now? Yeah. You know, right now I'd have a five year old, a three year old, and a more than likely a one month old son. And a beautiful wife. And I'm just like, right now it's just me. I watched that video of you finding out that Shanann was pregnant. You don't seem excited. You seem like kind of in shock Scared. and yeah, like oh fuck, like well, it's, it's already complicated and now this. Well, it's like uh, when we had talked about it, like a couple weeks, it happened fat. Like with Bella, it was like we almost gave up mm-hmm. trying, and then she bought me like a supercharger from my car. And then with CC, it was like we had to try and try and try. And then finally, but with Nico, it was, you know, once or twice. And then like two weeks later, she's pregnant. Is mm-hmm. that what happened? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's just like, it was more of like surprise, scared. I'm like, wait, what? It's like, we just, we just, yeah. we just talked about this. <laughs> like, you know, you know, people have brought up the fact like, oh, she, she was quite pregnant before. Like, you guys even talked about it. I'm just like, no, it's, just not, it's not, no. Oh. But like yeah, it was insanely fast. I give it that. Like that's the only reason I ever gave that notion. Like even the moment of thought, because it was like faster than any other time that she she'd gotten pregnant. Right. You just didn't seem happy. Like you know what I mean. Like yeah, I, I haven't like I don't remember the video much. I know she was wearing like a oops we did it again shirt I think, and I was walking with my cooler or something. And mm-hmm. I don't remember like my actual like reaction like watching the video but like I could see I could see her surprise see her, like uh, it didn't seem like he was jumping from joy type thing. Yeah, it didn't seem like that. Did you watch the one of the uh, when I found out about CC? Huh. Oh, no, okay. Is it totally different? Yeah, it was Yeah. Yeah, it was because uh Bella was in the crib and it had an eviction notice on the Oh yeah, I think you crib. told me about it. Yeah, I never saw mm-hmm. it though. Yeah, I picked up Bella and spun her around, and whatnot. this time it was just me and Shanann, and she was in the kitchen. I don't know, like, I don't forget what date it was, maybe like June 3rd or 5th or 7th, I'm not sure like what date it was the video, but maybe I already felt guilty about talking to Nikki at work. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe that was going through my head. Is that the potential timing? Does that make sense? Okay. I don't remember the video, what day the video was, but I knew, like, I kind of met Nikki around, like, June 1st. I knew, like, the, she told me, like, afterwards. When you say met her, you mean, like, went on a date with her? No, no, I never went on a date with her until she went to North Carolina. Oh, okay. Just, like, flirting stuff? Yeah, I mean, there was natural flirting back back and forth, and I was just, like, I just, I knew that, like, with that video timing, I probably just looked like I was, like, felt guilty for even talking to the girl at work. Well, you probably did, right? Yeah. Did you guys fight before you and Shanann? I know you talked about like not really raising your voice and stuff. Was there... Because I want to say, didn't a neighbor talk about them fighting and stuff? Yeah, but that was that was embellished and exaggerated, and he retracted that. Oh, he ended yeah, up he, doing yeah, that? Yeah, he retracted that as well. Did you guys ever fight? Did you ever... Um, yeah, was, was there any domestic violence in your house? Like, no, never, this is strange to us to even have from her to you. I mean, yeah, she gets no. mad when she's pregnant and grabs a knife or no, like scratches I mean, you or smacks you around or nothing. No, she's never like nothing. Okay, that's what makes all this 
even more hard to understand because I'm not understand the point. No, from yours too. Yeah. Did she ever belittle you at all? Did you ever feel that way, maybe? Was that? Did, you, did she ever make you feel like she belittled you or you felt belittled by her? I mean, there's always points, like, in, in a marriage where, like, you know, the dominant person, like, you know, takes control of sure. everything. But, like, you know, I was, my whole life, I just kind of went with the flow. Like, yeah, I never, I never, like, put myself in the center of attention I didn't want to be. Yeah. And I just kind of... I just wanted to be in the back row. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, was, if she did belittle me, I couldn't think of point, think at that point or time. She never really felt that way, right? No, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I always knew I was like, you know, the introvert, and she was the, you know, right. she took control of most situations. Like when people came over, like you know, I knew what I, <laughs> I <goal> was. <laughs> yeah, like I watch videos. It's like. Like cooking, you know, or she'd make like powder balls, or you know, or like uh, protein balls, or whatever. Yeah. You just don't seem like you want to be in those videos. No. Like you feel, I feel like you were being forced to be in those videos. And correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's I, what I, it I seemed like to me. I hated being in videos. I hated. I mean, I did it because for her, because right. it was for, for her business and sure. stuff. But like it was, you know, I I didn't. I hated just being out yeah. for everybody to see. That's why, I like the whole like. The gender reveal thing, I was just like, hmm, I, I didn't want it to be like some live Facebook video. I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah. But like, I just, I never wanted to be out there. Yeah. I know, I'm like. Well, even when she was, because we talk about this a lot, Tammy and I and Dave, even when it was, you know, I think it was Florida on some level or Thrive thing and she's like here we are and it's all expenses paid and oh, I was like I remember looking at you and thinking like he is not into this video right now no you don't look into any of the videos I'll be honest with you I wouldn't be either yeah, yeah that's not me yeah, yeah I, get I, it. I, I, I mean I remember you talking about like she would even post stuff for you like because oh, yeah. you're technically a salesman too of yeah, was, Lavelle of yeah. Thrive <laughs> like she put me underneath her not like anything like any of my friends or stuff like anything I do would help her. Right. So it was just, you know, I would send her pictures. Like, like I'd say, I take a picture with your patch. I'm like, okay, send it to her, and then she'd make a post about it. And she would, she eventually, she was like, I need to take more control over like your business and stuff. I was like, I don't know what to talk about. Right. Like, if I wanted to talk about, talk to somebody at the mall or at the pool or somebody about this, I'd just stumble all over my words and just like, they'd be like, okay, bye. But no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sales. Jesus, she's, she's, I mean, she could sell everything you're wearing back to you. Right. <laughs> and you wouldn't even know it. Like, wait, I just paid. Right. Shirt, I paid 20 bucks for it. Yeah, it's, it's, those videos were not me. I just, I did it just, just to support her. You know, like, she would always say, oh, Could hey. you tell her no? Could you say, I don't want to be in that video? Or was that an option? Probably not an option. I mean, it's like, you know, she would have been like, oh, why this is the, you know, help our family. This is for, you know, to help this and that. You know? So I couldn't have told her no. I mean, it would just, it would have made her mad. I would have been like, no. I would, I wouldn't really start that just because it's for the business, it's for the family. You know, I, I was just going to try to help out wherever we can. Right. Did that actually make money? Mm-hmm. So not only just more sales, but it actually put money in your guys' pocket. Mm-hmm. She made probably probably in that last year probably as much as I did on commissions. Basically, I mean, I know that's a simplified version of it, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, they don't mind. take taxes out on it, so yeah. right. So that, that was like the good thing, and they paid for your car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did they give you an allowance, her an allowance or something mm-hmm. to buy a car? Yep, yeah, you, if, you, if you're a certain level, like a 12k or above, they give you a car allowance once a month. I'm not sure how they how they made money. The owners doing that, but they did. Yeah. Unless they're just like an insane markup on the product, which I probably is. Probably is. Yeah. I'm not sure how much much it costs for them to make it. But. Yeah. Did you feel like a different person wearing those patches? Especially like the the duo the burn. I, I mean, the, it felt. I mean, like the Apple watches. Like if you look on it, like when it tells you to exercise, it says mm-hmm. I was exercising like all day. My heart rate was like up. Oh. Just from those batches. Was it full of caffeine or what? Uh, they just have something. They had something in them. I mean, I had, I had the black label ones, the, the longer black ones, 
they still send caffeine in them, but it never had that effect. I mean, the duo burn ones, the ones that are more of like the fat loss type, it was, I could, it felt like I was working out all day, even though I wasn't. Oh, were you tired? I mean, I know at some points, I, I mean, even Nikki said that, like, you know, I'd fall asleep on the couch, oh. on her couch, while I was talking to her, and then, like, <laughs> pick back up like I was, like, I never knew I fell asleep, mm. which I don't know if it was, like, some insomnia thing or what, but, like, I, was, huh. I wasn't sleeping. Mm. You had a lot going on then. Yeah. Yeah, but that was the only patches I really felt, like, a real big difference on, just because it felt like, it felt like I was working out all day. Mm-hmm. You don't feel like they changed your personality or anything like that, though, or do you? I don't. I don't really know. I know I just, I just felt different on those than any other patch. It was I feel like I could just go longer and longer each day, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure like if that was probably, that was probably a bad thing because I, I don't think I was probably sleeping more than three hours a night. So would you stay at it when Shan was gone? Would you stay with Nikki and then go home for like to get ready for work? Yeah, I just wake up at like four, four thirty, and go home and get ready for work and leave. And I just work out when I got back home. Mm-hmm. What were the conversations with Nikki as far as um, at some point you guys were talking about her helping you find an apartment? So what did you guys talk about as far as your future together? That didn't really happen until like I got back from back from the beach. So I told her like I you know, I, I lied to her like, hey, you know, like I don't like I had talked to Shan about getting a separation. And that talk hadn't happened yet. No. I okay. mean it, it kind of like not, I mean, she knew something was going on and yeah. things. I mean we, we weren't sleeping in the same room and then she she you know she even mentioned the fact, like, hey, you know, you know, Colorado's a fifty fifty state or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, I guess you looked it up. But you know, that actual talk I didn't like that what happened. I was just like I thought it was gonna happen. Yeah. And so when in conversations with Nikki, and I get it, I mean, you're, you're telling her like the progress toward the divorce is a little bit more than it was. Mm-hmm. And then so what were you guys planning? So it was more of like uh, she's gonna help me find a apartment that was affordable. That's mm-hmm. kind of just around like Brighton or maybe just close to work, like another for London or something around there. That's yeah. kind of like where my area was. Mm-hmm. Did you talk about moving in with her? She did. She didn't want that. She didn't want that. Would no. you have done that if she would have been yeah. cool with that? Uh, I, I, I've been a little too soon. I would have thought cause there's just you know. We only been really seeing each other like almost like a month or maybe just talking about two months. So that would have been really. She she called her house like her apartment like her. I don't know like her, kind of like a shield or kind of like her. She had another word for it, but like her safe place. Yeah, like a safe mm-hmm. place or something like that. And she said like you know people like to invade it, but that's why she always let me come over because she said she felt like it was. That was fine, like her dog liked me and everything. Like she can say, hey, you know, just ship people on here type thing. You know? Okay. So. so you and Shannon, did you did you and talk about selling the house? At what point did you I mean, there was some discussion there with Ann yeah, Meadows she, and Yeah, she had sent an email about to Ann about like how we would go about like selling the house. Yeah. And I think Ann told her about, you know, get like Ann was always about getting pre approved. Just like, you know, like if you're going to sell your house, get pre-approved for like another house. So it's like, you know, much faster. Yeah, so you can just quickly transit from one to the other. Okay. When did that happen?
Like, yeah. I was like, I didn't know, like, it was turn once a month there. Progress toward the divorce is a little bit more than it was. Mm-hmm. And then, so what were you guys planning? So it was more like uh, she was going to help me find an apartment that was affordable. That's mm-hmm. kind of just around like Brighton or maybe just close to work, like another for London or something around there. So that's kind of like where my area was. Mm-hmm. Did you talk about moving in with her? She, she didn't want that. She didn't want that? Would no. you have done that if she would have been yeah. cool with that? Uh, I, I, I've been a little too soon. I would have thought there was just, you know, we only been really seeing each other like almost like a month or maybe just talking about two months. So I would really, she she called her house like her apartment like her, I don't know, like her like, kind of like a shield or kind of like her. She had another word for it, but like her safe place. Yeah, like a safe mm-hmm. place or something like that. And she said, like you know people like to invade it, but that's why she always let me come over because she said she felt like it was. That was fine. Like, her dog liked me and everything. Like, she can say, hey, you know, just ship people on here type thing. You know, okay. So, so you and Shannon, did you did you and talk about selling the house? At what point did you? I mean, there was some discussion there with Ann yeah, Meadows. She, and, yeah, she had sent an email about to Ann about, like, how we would go about, like, selling the house. Yeah. And I think Ann told her about, you know, get, like, Ann was always about getting pre-approved. Just like, you know, like if you're going to sell your house, get pre-approved for like another house. So it's like, you know, much faster. Yeah, so you can just quickly transition from mm-hmm. one to the other. Okay. When did that happen? Remember? I think it was either right before we left. No, that had to have been like first week of August, somewhere around there. I think she may have contacted her. Okay. So the plan was maybe to buy a house. I think you told me in Brighton, you think about buying a house in Brighton. Yeah, just like, yeah, just like right? that, uh, that Adams 12. Mm-hmm. School system or something. Yeah. So, okay. I think I think that's what Brighton is. I don't see so. Yeah. What were you thinking about when you called that the school that day on Monday? I, I was freaking out. I didn't know. Like, like I was thinking in my head, like what I just did, what I just done, and I didn't know. Like, it was it was even, it was stupid to do anything. Just I mean. To call the school, to call Ann, to call anybody. I mean, it, I mean, they were right to be, you know, suspicious about anything. Look, I knew I, I probably sounded eccentric on the phone and out of out of sorts. It was just, you know, I can only, only uh, I don't even know what they were thinking. They heard me. I think they thought I was weird, but I don't know how you would not sound weird, you know, like you said, so. So, are you 100% sure the girls were still around and alive when you drove out? Okay. So that's completely accurate. There's nothing nothing else about that. They, they got in the truck. Okay. Where did the blanket go? Either... Probably in the trash can or something. I think. In the I trash? I, it wasn't like it was still in my truck. Okay. We thought we saw some GPS where you had stopped by near construction, okay. a roll off dumpster. Is that true or? I think yeah. I think that's like I dumped my clothes in there. So that would have been on the way back to the house. Yeah. In my neighborhood. Yeah. When Officer Kuna was there. Okay. Is it one of those red construction dumpsters? More than likely. Okay. Did you pack new clothes? How did that work? I already have some in there because, like, in case we had, like, a spill or something. Oh. Yeah. If you ever get crude oil on you, you don't. Yeah, I, had, I, like, I have, like, new, I have, like, two pairs of boots, uh, all kinds of different stuff in there just because, like, like, just one time I had to pick up a spill and I had defrost on and I had, like, a headache for, like, two weeks because, oh. like, the crude oil that come in. So I always have some in there. So where did you keep them after you took them off? Like, did you just change out there into your new other uh, So, like, I, I dumped my clothes in that dumpster. But that wasn't that on the way back when you were coming? Like, you had already worked the whole day, yeah. right? Yeah, I'd, work, no. well, I'd worked, like, for, like, 11 or so. 11. Yeah. So that was back when, well, when Nicole Atkinson. Yeah, when she was at, yeah, when she at my house, hitting the doorbell is right. when I knew. I'm out of the house. Right. 
Did you think right then, like, oh, fuck, like, here we go? Or what were you thinking about? I, I didn't even know why she was there. I was like, I didn't know, like, maybe maybe she had an appointment or something with Shanann. I, I didn't know. What did you think, like, that day, like, what you were going to say? Like, what was your plan? Were you just going to go home and be like, report to the police that your family's gone? I, or I, like, once, like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Like, after everything, I mean, I don't even know how I was even acting even normal to people that was around. Because when, like, Troy and Cody and Chad and Melissa and all them, like, you know, when they showed up on the site, I don't even know how I was even being somebody coherent what I was saying, but apparently that understood me. So I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, like I said, I, this wasn't, like, something, like, some criminal minds type of like well thought yeah, out. Yeah, thing. it was nothing like that. You just by minute at that point. Yeah, it was. I had no idea what, what was going on. So once the girls were were gone, um, was it also just a minute by minute thing as far as the oil tanks? Yeah, I didn't know what what to do. I mean, I, just thinking about an oil tank just makes me want to throw up. Yeah. And was that just because it was? in front of you and there it was and just presented itself? It wasn't a, a plan for him? Okay. Was there any reason why the separate ones? No, it's just, like you said, it was like a going up, just going up the stairs and it just didn't, you no, know, like what Frank said, is like I was trying to separate everybody. That's not, no. no I, was, yeah. I didn't want to separate anybody. What was the reason? I, I I can't even tell you. It was like, like I said, like something else was in control of what I was doing. And it was like, I was doing something I never thought I would ever do in my life. Mm -hmm. Did you think there would be less chance of someone finding them if they were in separate tanks or? I don't know. Sounds like a little bit. Whatever, whatever my reasoning was in my head that day was, it wasn't sound. It was nothing was right. And you don't even remember thinking about it? No, it was just like, it was like, like a reaction of something that I wasn't even thinking about. Yeah. Can you talk about the trash bags? Do you remember that? Oh, with, uh... There were two... Oh, uh, with... Okay. Yeah, it's trying to... Because, like, the sheet kept... I didn't want to, like, when, when I was putting the one coherent, I guess, thing I had, like, I didn't want the girls looking at Shanann while they were in the back seat. Mm -hmm. So what'd you do? I put a trash bag on one end and on her feet and on her head so they didn't have to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were just too little to kind of figure out, right? Yeah, they didn't know this one. Okay. That's good. I just know, like, when I was driving up there, I mean, you know, they were just, you know, sitting there just, you know, kind of asleep or kind of just, like, you know, holding on to each other, laying in each other's laps. You know, I, I didn't. I didn't. Do you remember having any thoughts or thinking about why not just putting them all together with Shanam? Honestly, honestly, it was just happening so fast. I had no I, time to really... I thought that was my own. Okay. But I wasn't like dutifully trying to separate anybody from passing away, trying to keep anybody separate. <laughs> and everything, everything, you know, Frank Sandy and Frankie said, you know, like, I, I, I don't hold it against them. I mean, they can hate me for. They, they have a right to hate me for the rest of their lives. They don't hate they you. Don't. In fact, <laughs> while we're on the subject, I, I speak with them weekly. And, and I told them that we were going to come here and then hopefully they would speak with us. And they told me to tell you, understandably, they're, you know, they're devastated. Um, but they actually said that they, they love you. They still love you. And, and Sandy explained it, you know, he's, he's our son, son-in-law for eight years. I can't just turn that off. So they don't hate you. They don't. So, That's amazing to hear that. Yeah. Well, and I can tell you, Sandy was, 
was was the one that was most resistant to penalties in this case. And she said that she told me that from the very beginning. Um, that she didn't want that. It's God's decision. It's not her decision. And then she told me that even then. So it's not just a one-time thing that, that she has said it to me. Um, it's been over the whole course of, of the event. So um, that's probably one of the most honest things someone's ever told me. You know? So that's it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, her faith is, you know, she's obviously a believer. So am I. I yeah. get it. So I understand it. You know, so. That's amazing. Did you hear that? Yeah. Good people. I would have, I would have figured they would have hated me for. They don't. I mean, yeah, anybody would think that. I certainly would have, but I, I have to admit, I was surprised. Really taken back by that, but they certainly don't. So. What did they say when they knew you were coming out here? Um, they just they said they want to know, you know, details because they need closure. And that's really all they want, and, and they want to keep it private. And I said, well, absolutely. That's you know, we'll talk to them about what you told us, and just so they can put it past them, because you know, they're having a hard time dealing with it and trying to get past it all. And, um, and I think that may help, just to you know, just closures, know. closures. You know, I mean. My parents still think, you know, like, I, I told them I pled guilty for a reason. Right. Right. And, like, I told it to them when they had that uh, video video phone thing in Colorado the day before, like, I pled guilty. Like, I pled guilty for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't just, you know, I knew other people were watching. So I didn't just go in and, like, just say anything. But, mm-hmm. Like, they seemed to take it. I mean, okay. Mm-hmm. What made you do that, Chris? What made you plead guilty? I didn't want anybody else to. I didn't want them to go through this for two or four years. I didn't want my attorneys to lie for me for four for two or four years. Like they, I mean, they would have done anything I told them to do. Sure. That's what they're. I don't see how they can do that. Like you know, that's what attorneys do. You know, like they take their defendant and they say, hey, like, what happened? Okay, we'll go with that story. Like I told them everything I just told you guys. And it's just like they just and they got together. They're like, well, if you know, if if they ever wanted, they ever offered a plea deal, would you ever want to like just plead guilty to? I'm like, yeah. I mean, if, it, if we can end this, end it. Like, I was like in September. I told them that. Really? Yeah. They like, but you know, it was way too early, and the prosecution was still doing their. Yeah. This guy used to grabbing evidence and all kinds of stuff, and that wasn't even on, really on the table. So I think it was in, like around Halloween. Mm-hmm. I think that's when uh, the prosecution went to went to Frank and Sandy and Frankie's house and it's talking like, if we can end this, would you be open to that? And that's when like you know like the whole death penalty and everything, all that right. conversation happened. And uh, I guess they were surprised that it, it, it would just be over. Yeah, and we were all in shock. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that was like... It's like we were going 100 miles an hour, and then we just hit a brick wall. Like, that's what it felt like to all of us. So, I mean, obviously you had more time to yeah, I mean, I, I contemplate mean, it than yeah, us. I, was, I, I mean, I told, I told John and Kate and Sophia and everybody, Amy, hey, is if, if we can just stop this, and like, I know it's, you know, everybody's telling me to fight, fight this. You know, there's no, like, there's like, everybody's saying there's like not enough evidence to such and this this and that and I'm just like no I'm just it, this needs to end like I don't want people to have to because for Frank and everybody to have to fly back to Colorado every single time and get reminded of this like I'm not sure but it's never going to go away but to actually have to come and talk about it, have other people talk about it have you know have all three of you get on the witness on the witness stand and say you know what they saw yeah. and what they've seen you know, what what they, they heard on tapes and everything like that. It's just like I don't want people to relive that over and over and over again for for years. Like if I could just end this for everybody and then like if there's any closure at all, they could you know, they could start then instead of like twenty, twenty two. But you know, like, you know, and everything just like so I know it'd only get worse for everybody. So did it have anything to do with you not Having the death penalty? 
No, like, I mean, honestly, like, when I was sitting in that cell, I felt like I should have died. I mean, I, I was listening to everybody telling me, like, hey, if you do this and this, you can hang yourself in that cell. You could do this and that. You could, they were, like, telling you stuff. Yeah, you, could they, you could drown yourself in the toilet if you wanted to fill your toilet bowl up or something like that. It was, um, they've been there a bunch of times. And, like, you know, I was, at one point, I was listening to them. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, you know, you know. I just felt like maybe I could, maybe there's a different purpose for me somewhere. You know, maybe it's here. I don't know. Like I prayed to God every day that He would move me away from Colorado, like he move me away from like the DOC there, because I just knew like cause they were saying there was a hit on me. <laughs> they said if I was going to a DOC in Colorado, like I'd last a week and I'd be dead. Because like the gangs and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So like I just felt like God moved me here for a reason. And I'll, Hopefully I can help people that way, but like I didn't want my family, I didn't want you to answer family, all of our friends, like you know, having to go through that because after a while I knew it was like this stuff was everywhere, and I knew like all her thrive friends, everybody that was just like it would just it would just broke just with that hole in their heart was a little bit bigger every time. I didn't want that. I knew it would have gotten worse. I didn't want I didn't want it to get any worse than it already was. Did you ever think about, well, you know, it could be very believable, what I told him, it could be very believable that Shanann did, you know, end the girls. And so maybe if I tried to convince people that, maybe if I fought with my attorneys on that, maybe I could lessen it somehow. Did you ever think about that? Honestly, I never even thought about the story until you guys mentioned it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I wondered... I never even thought about it until you guys mentioned it. And what did you think about it once it got mentioned? It's just like I just went with it. I didn't like, you know, I knew my dad was out there. I knew it was like, you know, I knew they would probably believe it because, you know, my mom and my sister just never really liked shit in. I knew it like, you know, I mean, through all this, like I got letters from some of my friends that even said, you know, you know, when we went over to your house, we could see, you know, Shane was more of a dominant personality and more of like, you know, you know, you're always helping with the kids and everything. You just, you know, you're a great dad and everything. We could see, you know, a couple things that I never saw or, you know, whatnot. And even my best friend Mark can say, you know, there's always, you know, something, you know, I didn't really get with Shannon. I was like, nobody ever told me any of this stuff, but okay. But yeah, it was, I never thought about that story. And, you know, that's what my attorneys were going with. And then like, I think it was probably the second week I told them, like, what had really happened. What did they say after that? They were quiet. They were writing it down. They were, they they said they wouldn't judge me. So I told them. I told them everything that happened. And they, you know, appreciated, like, I guess, you know, most of the time, you know, they're, Defendant or their, you know, defendants don't like tell them actually what happened. No, yeah. they just you know tell them all right, get get me off, get me out of here. This is what happened. But I told them what happened. I I didn't want them going. If this was going to go like anywhere in courts, I didn't want them to be under a false pretense and like get surprised. So I know like there was probably things that you guys probably knew that. I mean, if I, if I just kept, if I lied to them and just tell them, no, this, this is what happened, that it would have, like, made them look, you know, foolish and stupid and just, like, you know, unprepared. And I was like, this is what happened. And they, you know, they appreciated me telling me telling them that. So now they, they would be prepared. And that's when they were saying, like, you know, if if it was ever, you know, if we ever went to them, the prosecution would say, hey, if we could end this, would I be open to it? I'm like... This could end. It's ended. I know there was like, um, wasn't her phone found on the couch or in between the couch cushions? Like, did you plant all that stuff? I just threw it in there. You just threw it yeah, in there? I, I, I why, was, why did you do that? I, I don't know what was going on that morning. Like, even like, you know, her watch, her phone, like, I, you know, that was actually like, if I'd planned this, I would probably just take it out to the field, you know. Mm-hmm. But, what you about know, her ring and stuff? What were you thinking about that? It's like, you know, maybe she wanted. Maybe she actually really wanted a divorce. Maybe she didn't want to fix it. She put it there on the counter. She took it off? Or did I, you I take it off? I took it off. Okay. 
Oh, so that would look like she was saying, I want a divorce. I'm leaving it here when I'm taken off. I see. So the phone and her watch in the couch was that that morning before you left to go to service? Okay. That's, I think, uh, Nicole's son found it or something. Yeah. What other things did you do that maybe we even missed? So the phone and the watch. You know, I think I threw the therapy book she wanted me to read in, in the trash. Um, that was that morning? I probably, I think so. Though. Were you trying to make it look like she threw it in the trash? I don't, I don't know. I just, oh. I, I just didn't think it was, nothing was ever going to work again. So it was, I didn't know what was going on. Did you go down to the basement? I thought the basement door open. Yeah, the door is open, but yeah. So there was a lot of movement, you know, I think it was around 426 or something. And the garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Other than you had a lot of steps. I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so like the basement, I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing I really have down there is my workout. I the bench press. Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? Did you think about well, maybe I'll pick her out that way or? Mm-hmm. Is it a walkout basement? No. It no. wasn't at your house. Okay. No, it's like a garden level basement. So okay. But now I don't remember really. I'm, what's that? I don't think it worked out that morning. Like, were you packing your lunch in the kitchen? Like, did you oh, have yeah. to do all that normal yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely I packed the lunch and everything. Did all that. I don't, I don't remember about the basement. Unless I just worked out that morning, I just don't remember. I don't think I did. So one of the more... Unless there was a trash bag down there. That yeah, you got trash bags from there? Uh, maybe, maybe maybe, there wasn't any in the garage and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. Okay. So there was a roll in your truck? There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. That would have been kept in the basement maybe? Or in the basement or the garage. Or the garage. Yeah. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Graham? Um, one of the more kind of poignant or tender moments in all of this was um, seeing you with your dad when he came in. Um, what was it like when you picked him up at the airport? It was it was very strange. It was, it was kind of like I almost knew this probably the last time I'd ever see him on the outside. In my head, I knew that. Yeah. What'd you guys talk about? Honestly, like he just wanted to talk about sports. He just wanted. Yeah. He just like you know, he he's always kind of like you know, distance himself from like uh, like a problem type thing. Like you know when, like if there was ever an issue or anything like that, he always wanted to talk about like just bring up like when I would try to get him to quit smoking like all the time, like. That's after like I graduated high school and whatnot. He would. Are you talking about cigarettes? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he would always like just change stuff. He'd be like, oh, you know, happened in the race, uh, football, or something. I mean, he he just never wanted like you know. He said, okay, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it, and he just boom, something else. And you know, I just kind of felt like it was kind of like that, you know, like he he asked maybe asked like a few questions, like you know, do you know where they're at? Do you, do you, do you think you know? Think you know where they're at or anything like that? I just you know, don't know. And then like start talking about just want to talk about sports and just like normal normal things. And just kind of I'm not sure if he maybe knew anything. You know, maybe he kind of figured out something maybe happened. Just want to talk to me as his, as his son. Is it possible he saw that you were in a stressful situation and wanted to do what he always did, make yeah. things comfortable? I think that was a good way to put it. I bet you picked up a lot of that from him. Yeah, because uh, in stressful situations, like, I I mean, the gray hair didn't show it, but, like, I, I try not to be in stress. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, like, you know, I worked on cars, there's a lot of stress, because it's always, you know, it's on commission, mm-hmm. you know, you get paid what you do, not by showing up. So, you know, then Darko was a little less stressful, because, you know, I got paid just to be there. Mm-hmm. 
No, was your dad's marriage like yours and Shanann's marriage as far as like your dad was the more passive one and uh, your mom was the more dominant? Mom was always the more aggressive one. Was she like Shanann in a way? I mean, were you attracted to Shanann because she was kind of like how your mom and dad's relationship was? or It was like, you know, it, it almost mirrored like her mom and dad's relationship, honestly, because her dad's like my dad. They're both like kind of calm, cool. Mm -hmm. like, right? I could see that. Yeah. And her mom is very. Sandy rules that roof. Oh yeah. 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 Very. And it's just like you know, I, I, I kind of related it to that because mm -hmm. like her mom always said like she she always told Shanann that she would marry somebody that was kind of like her dad, and I felt like I was kind of like her dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't like, like you know I couldn't build a lot of things you could, but you know our personalities were kind of like you know I was always you know. I think he really liked me the first time he met me because it's like I was um, helping helping Shan with this. Uh, she had got this car from the dealership that she was working that she worked at, and she was driving around and felt like you know the wheel was going to fall off. And uh, I pulled over where her dad was, and I was I got her knee jacked it up, and I was like you know trying to fix everything. He's saying like any other guy she'd ever dated would have just like stood by and watched me do it. And so I think that's when he really like kind of. Kind of like me. Took to you. Yeah, it's just like I was. I was always wanting to help people, not to, not to hurt anybody. So. Well, and you helped her all through her lupus, and you're at the colonoscopy, yeah. and you're jacking up the car. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, did, I mean, any time she had an issue with like car at the Dirty South Customs, and like I would just go out to work, mm -hmm. see what I could do with it. You know, I would just you know, do whatever I could to help. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the reasons Frank and Sandy work so well is because Frank lets Sandy be Sandy. Yeah, and they probably both saw in you <laughs> that you let Shanann be Shanann. Yeah, I just like you know, I didn't, I didn't try to change her. Right, like I just let her be, you know, who she is. Yeah, she's like, you know, she's gung ho. She's, yeah. you know, she knows what she wants. She's gonna go get it. Yeah, and I didn't say, hey, you know, you can't do that. And that's what her first husband. Did. Yeah, she he controlled everything. He he tried to be Sandy, and it didn't work. And she and she turned into almost like me. She was like. She just kind of like, like played back and just kind of like let him do what he was doing. And then I think she learned after that that she could just be herself. And then with me, she could definitely be herself. Yeah. And so that's how it worked. So do you think your dad had any inkling? Because I'm trying to remember the timing. He showed up when you were still walking around. You weren't in any trouble yet when Ronnie came in. Yeah, I was. I had met with dude in that for mm -hmm. like a three or four hours. And then I was at Nick and Amanda's house, okay. out there, and that's when I went to go pick him up. Okay. And you picked him up. It was early that morning, right? Yeah, it was like ten thirty, I think, when his flight came in. Okay. And then so from there, I, you guys probably drove home and then to the police station. Yep. And the the talks there were no type of confession from you. Okay. No, it was like just he was just gonna wait. Okay. I told him, like, you know, if you're hungry, there's like that barbecue joint down the street. Yeah. And, like, you know, it's good. And it's, you know, he told me he never left. He didn't. I wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's faithful. He was. Yeah, was I mean, I don't know how he lasted that long without food. We yeah. ended up giving him food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he was great. Um, and the reason I ask is because when I look back and watch the video, um, now knowing what I know after talking to you today, I can see how genuine he was. But I just didn't know if you guys had come up with some sort of plan. Okay. No, we no, never talked about it. Okay. Like that. Yeah. I don't know if, I, if I had told him anything, he would have probably just told me to just tell him right away. I think you're right. Like, he would have still loved me either, either way, but he would have told me you need to tell yeah. him, like, right now. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I didn't think I was going to be there for 14 or how long it was, like, 10 hours or something like that day. You were there a long time. Yeah, but it was... He would have told me just to say, just, just to tell you. Yeah. Did you know walking in there that you were going to tell us? Or did you think? I didn't. I mean, I knew there was a reason you brought me back in. I know it well for the. Um, what did you think about the polygraph? That was horrible. <laughs> Why do you I, say that? I don't know how you do that. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> Tammy's a torturer. I am not. No, like. I mean, tell you, me. You answered. Oh, you asked me questions for like, well, like three or four hours beforehand and then you do the polygraph and it's like you just break down somebody's brain to where like too much like, or too what much. <laughs> <laughs> jello and it's just like I, I know it's it's you guys have a job and you have a plan and that's what you executed it 
It's just thorough, right? There's just no, no there's yeah. no way to get out of there without the truth. No, I mean, I, I kind of knew, like, where, because right when I, he asked me about, like, Saturday night, the, when I told your brother Rocky, I was like, man, she was, like, going through her head. I was like, <laughs> well, we did know, we found out about Nikki right before the polygraph. Uh, I, I figured that out after, after with meeting with John and everybody that yeah. she had met with somebody from the CBI, mm-hmm. like yes. the, like on the 14th or the 15th. I was just like, wait, they were talking. Oh, okay. So you already knew. So, but. I mean, I didn't know how extensive it was, but yes, we, we knew. Yeah, I, I mean, I, walking in there that day, just walking into that room, I knew I wasn't walking out. Yeah. Just, just the feeling I had walking in that room. Yeah. Just seeing, all, I mean, I don't remember if the polygraph stuff was already in there. I think it was. It but, was, yeah. But it was, I knew it. I, I just knew. felt, I just feel like sometimes when people, you know, do do the bad thing and they stay, like, some part of me thinks, well, I think they're here because they really want to tell us what happened. Because it's not normal that you want to keep all that in. Like, that just kills people on the inside. And I could tell it was killing you that day. Yeah, I mean, it was just like that. The 13th, 13th when I slept in the house, I didn't, nothing. I didn't know anything. I slept maybe like two hours because I just finally just got so tired. I just fell asleep. I turned out, I had every light on. I didn't. I Nothing felt right. What were you thinking about during your media interviews? I didn't want to do it. Why did you do it? Did you feel like you had to do it? I felt like, you know, they would have just kept knocking on my door. Yeah. If until I answered it and like I didn't even set it up, but you know, Nicole Atkinson set it up. She told me, Hey, Fox is gonna set it up. She said Fox is gonna be your house at ten thirty. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, oh, okay. And you know, I think I even called I even called you about it, like what do you recommend that I do? And he's like, It's kinda of up to you. Yeah. I'm like, okay, and I called one of her friends, you know, what should I do? And uh she said I probably wouldn't do it, but I just felt like you know I I don't, I don't even want to know what like, I said. I didn't even set it up, but because Nicole like, Atkinson set it up. Some people said it's only eight o'clock. She didn't want to set it up. She said Fox is going to your house at ten thirty. Like what? It, it didn't look good. I I mean obviously we can't say oh we knew right then he was lying, but I think we all watched it together and went this might be bad. Yeah, I, mean, I had that feeling after I watched it. So I could kind of see it in your face. It's like I was just blind to more and more people, and it's just like I just. Do you have internet access here? No. So you don't, just don't get into that trap of putting in. Watching what all trap? That, oh. The, the social media trap and all that. No, they don't, they don't let you have social media here. Yeah. Like, go. Uh, I think some of the GP guys are getting like these little like tablets or something that are like you know the size of like a older iPhone or something. Mm. But I think they can use like email, but I'm not sh- I'm not sure about like social media. No, no definitely no social media. But like, I'm not sure about internet or not. But mm-hmm. This place is kind of like you know a like dead zone pie for phones anyways. I would think. I don't know. We're getting service, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we would. We are here. <laughs> yeah, right in this maybe room. This, maybe this is kind of like a hub. Of yeah. Computers. <laughs> Yeah, that's this true. is the spot. Yeah, computer room. You would hope that it had some. Did you talk to um, Nikki afterwards? After all this happened.